Welcome back to another shop vlog. We got a lot of positive reception on the last one, so we thought we'd collect some footage and throw another one together. I'm holding up a part that I just finished up. This is the Operation One for one of the trunnion halves. I'm gonna just walk you guys through uh, making it and getting to this point, and then we're gonna jump into a couple other things that we have going on around the shop. Let's get right into it. We're getting going on the trunnion halves for the nose gear strut. We're out here a little bit early, so I'm still kind of waking up. I want to get a good jump start on this. We've got our fixture plate in place. I've already chewed it up to the table. And then I have my stock material. And I don't remember if I mentioned this earlier, but it's a little bit uh, thicker than it needs to be. We got about an extra half an inch on there. But when we ordered it, they didn't have the size that we needed in stock and they weren't gonna ship it till mid-May and we didn't wanna wait, so we figured just get a larger piece and get going on it. So I have to zero out our part, get it located to the machine, and then pretty much ready to hit go. Machine's running, we're doing our first passes of the day. This is our part sitting in there right now like this and we're just taking off the top of the material and it's going to come in and bore out the center here. So where it's at right now it's roughed out all internally and what that means is that there's only a little bit of material left to remove and that's where the finishing end mill comes in. So all the hard work's been done with the roughing end mills. So I'm gonna use a ball end mill to come in there and make the walls nice and pretty and right to dimension. I did the internal work first because I didn't want any flex occurring. So if I removed all the material from it, it'd be some thin walls. And once you get into thin wall, those thin walls can flex. I didn't want that happening. So we can kind of cheat that by keeping an extra amount of material on the outside edges and that'll provide support when the end mill is coming in to do its cuts. So we kind of do the finishing portion internally and then once that's done we come back and do the finishing on the outside. Last time I was working on this, I drilled out some of the holes for the new positions on the panel to align with some of the renderings you might have seen. And this will get us towards a flight test profile, which would basically be like a daytime VFR setup. So on the left here, we have our master switch. We've got our two ECU switches and our fuel pump toggle. And we've got our starter toggle here, which is keyed in the center. We have our landing gear switch along with uh, one of our landing gear indicators. I've got the other two on order. And then these are our lights. So you'd have nav, strobe, taxi, and landing. Down in the center here, we have now our Airmaster prop controller installed with the fine and coarse control uh, to the right of it. And then over on the right here, we have just a USB plug for five volt output for something like an iPad tablet here, and then our ELT toggle switch over here. So like I said, this will establish kind of our first flight setup. Uh, so we will not have an additional display here except for the iPad tablet, which will be driven off of our iLevel 3 Adahar's backup. And then we will not have our some of our center elements like the autopilot can control module, so these holes will be deprecated. They are from a previous setup. In the future, this hole will be taken up by the autopilot module. Uh, we'll still have our autopilot through the G3X, we just won't have the control box that Garmin supplies. And we will not be putting in a GTN 650 module below it, but 
that will all come in due time once we move this more towards an IFR setup after we get through flight testing. So um, in the meantime, I'm gonna be rerouting some of the wiring to these new components so that I can establish that before installing everything else in the panel. Where are you at? It's roughing the outside of the part. This is the kind of the last tool pads before taking the part off and setting it up for off two. So it's gonna make its way around the whole perimeter, uh, two step downs, so it's gonna machine at half an inch down and then it's gonna come down another half an inch and rough out the outside. Parts all finished up, uh, op one anyways. So where are we at? This is the front trunnion half for the nose gear. And what we did is removed a lot of the material, roughly half of it. And we're left with the inner bore and some of these other inner features of it. So next steps now is to take it off, flip it over 180 degrees on the same fixture and set it up for op two, which is removing the material on the backside. So I'm gonna get going on that. Keegan's been doing a whole bunch of work machining parts on the Tormach, and we've shown you some of that work already. And in between our last shop vlog and this shop vlog, uh, he made all these parts, which we haven't shown you yet. I'll talk a little bit about these, which are kind of interesting. These are the uprights, or we're calling them the engine mount uprights, and these form the backbone of our engine mount. These are made from stock that's an extruded aluminum tube. It has a rectangular cross section. So you can see that there. So we start off with that rectangular tube, but then we throw it up on the mill and then cut out these holes to make it turn into the engine mount. Milling is a process that works just fine for this, but in production, we're gonna use a laser CNC tube cutting process. We're gonna outsource that to someone who has a laser CNC tube cutter. I'll throw some footage up on the screen of that so you can see what it looks like. It's a pretty cool, fast, efficient process for cutting out shapes like this from uh, extrusions, whether it's a square or a round tube. Uh, so pretty exciting little process we get to use incorporating into this. You might notice if you've been following along that this looks a little bit different compared to our old engine mount design. Uh, you'll not notice there's a whole bunch of lightning holes in this compared to this one. Uh, there was a change in between our old design and our new design. And that meant that the loads or the way the loads travel through this structure are a little bit different compared to our old design. So we wanna put some uh, more hardcore work into the analysis and what we can get away with for throwing lightning holes in this. This is just fine right now, but it's still a little bit overkill. So you'll probably see this change down the road and we'll add a couple more lightning holes into this when we get that analysis finished up. It's really easy to just start off with the blank and then uh, it's easy to add holes in later. You might wonder why this engine mount looks so odd. You're probably more familiar with an engine mount design like this. This is a, a prototype one I had for a different aircraft. Uh, this is a welded tubular steel structure that's pretty conventional. Ours looks a lot different, of course. So the reason that is uh, our engine mount's really short and it holds the engine like this. This is where the engine would attach on these rubber donuts. And then these bolts go all the way through and through the firewall. So it's one set of bolts that holds the engine to the engine mount and then to the firewall. So this basically acts as a spacer. When these bolts are tightened down, this whole thing is in compression. So that's different than a design like this where you have a set of bolts holding the engine to the engine mount and then another set holding the engine mount to the firewall. We'll probably do a dedicated video at some point discussing this design uh, in more detail, but uh, we'll save that for another video. So we've been making a whole bunch of parts. I'll show you this guy. It's kind of a cool little part. This is uh, the gear or the gear segment that we will attach to the trunnion to drive the trunnion up and down. So there's a little pinion gear that interfaces with this and runs the gear up and down. This started out as a, just a generic blank gear like this and then we cut it down to this shape. Kind of wacky looking, but definitely a key component of making the gear work. Uh, we've got a lot more part, parts to come. So this is the stock for the next parts we're gonna machine out. On the bottom is the raw stock for the aft trending half. So you guys have seen the forward trending half. Keegan's been working on that. This is op one complete. And then we're gonna flip it over and machine the other side. So this is the stock for the other half. And then we also have stock for a bunch of other parts. Uh, the little torque links, the drag link mount and then the upper drag link stock. So this guy is going to interface with 
these two parts, which you saw these in our last shop vlog. Lots of parts, lots going on, but uh, it's all coming together and hopefully we get this together and get to test the gear pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. Okay, I guess I'm doing the outro. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this shop vlog. Uh, we got a lot more coming up. Keegan's got this part to finish machining. So we're gonna flip this over, do side two, and then we're gonna have more parts coming next week. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment or a like. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Ooh, nice fit. Perfect. It looks like an alien. That's the five inch one? Uh, you know what? They actually sent me a six inch.